All right, so I'm going to give you a little demo um, in RoboRealm. Just been playing around with this a little bit um, <clears throat> with the purpose of uh, controlling a, a uh, robot using Robotex motor controller. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I've, I've got op I just opened up RoboRealm. Um, one of the things you want to do when you open up RoboRealm is go to Options. Uh, make sure that you can see your webcam that you're using in here. Um, so in this case, I've got a, a Logitech C920. Uh, hooked into a USB port right now, and that's the uh, webcam I'm going to look at to acquire my image. You can see I'm acquiring live images from this, this webcam right now. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, this green calculator as kind of a, an object that I can track, just something I had laying around the house here that I, can, um, I should be able to track fairly easily. Uh, so let's do this now. Let's uh, go ahead and go to Colors, and we'll go to RGB Filter. And as soon as I do this, you're going to lose my image, which is fine. Uh, you don't need to see me to do this. Um, so I'll open up RGB filter. Um, you're going to see uh, right now it's kind of defaulting to red, and I really can't see this green object right now. But if I had a red object, I might be able to make out that red object there. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use a green object. So I'm going to change this to green and uh, hit OK. Now there's no green objects. One of the reasons I selected green is there isn't a lot of green behind me. Um, but I can see that green kind of plain as day now as I'm, I'm coming through here. So this is a good sign that you're working here, right? I've got a nice detectable object, a big blob of green um, that this RGB filter is now detecting. All right. The next thing I want to do is I want to, I want to look for the, the center of gravity on this is what they call it. So under analysis, you have a tool called center of gravity. And what this is going to do is when I hit OK on this, um, it's going to use that previous uh, filtered image to now create a center of gravity. So it finds that green image, and it's creating a center of gravity on that green image right there. What's nice about this is as I'm rotating back and forth, I can see I get an X location that's going from on this end, maybe about, I don't know, maybe down as little as you know 40 or 50, down to zero hopefully, and on this end, uh, maybe up as high as is about 600 or maybe 700. And then a similar thing going up uh, where I get up in the 5 or 600 range and down all the way down to the 0 for the Y range. So I get an X and a Y location of this image. This is nice because we could actually use this to steer our robot. If we know that we're trying to drive straight and the image is too far this way, I need to apply mo further, uh, more power to that left-hand motor to bring me back to drive straight. And vice versa, if I'm too far this way, I need to apply more power to my right-hand motor. And so this could be off in the distance that I'm trying to drive straight. Um, it could be as it gets bigger, I might trigger a turn, or as it gets smaller, I might continue to drive straight. So this is, this is huge right here because we've got some, uh, um, some really good data that we can work with. Now what's nice about, uh, about uh, RoboRealm as well is you can do some scripting in here. Um, so if you go under Extensions, I'm going to turn off the Analysis stuff here and drill into Extensions, and then Scripting, I can actually do VB Script. And you can do a, a number of uh, a scripts. There's a Python script here, and there's a VB Script here. Um, you know, we've been using Micro Basic Script for our, our Robotech motor controllers. Um, but I'm going to use VB Script, and I'm going to open this up. And this is where I'm actually going to type my code now is what I'm going to do. Um, there's a couple of key things that you'll have to know as you're typing code, if you're going to, uh, you know, read a variable or write to a variable, um, that's going to be get variable is going to be read, and um, set variable is going to be write is what we're going to do. Um, one thing that we we uh, got for free as we were doing the uh, as we were doing the center of gravity stuff is you'll notice the uh, you get this cog x this uh, center of gravity x that that kind of floats around and you get a center of gravity y that kind of floats around. So those are two variables that are going to come in real, real handy to me. I also get, you know, center of gravity area. They can see it gets bigger as I get closer and it gets smaller as I get further away. Um, so I'm, these are things I'm going to be able to use as I go into this VB script code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to look at those right off the bat. I'm going to say cog X because um, I want to use this as a variable here in a minute. And I'm going to say cog X equals get variable and I had to look this up a minute ago to, to know what I was typing in. But the variable that they use is called uh, uh, cog underscore x. And it's in quotation marks here. 
So I'm going to create this variable that I'm going to use called cogx, and it's going to be equal to the cogx that came in from the, the center of gravity uh, function. And then I'm going to do cog. I don't think I have a use for cogy, but I'm going to go ahead and call it anyways. And I'll, I'll just do the same thing, get variable. Um, parenthesis, quotation, cog underscore y is the actual variable with a quote and a, uh, and a parenthesis there. And then now that I've got those two, I'm going to make this, some decisions, meaning if, if it's right in the middle, drive straight. If it floats too far this way, uh, turn, turn the other way. And if it floats too far this way, turn the other way on that. So I can turn left or right based upon it floating too far one direction or the other direction. So I think the way I'm going to do that, first I'm going to look and say, well, where does this thing go? So on the X, it goes up to maybe 600 and it goes down to maybe, you know, 60 or something like that. You'll notice if you get too far one way, it won't actually recognize it, um, meaning there's a little green on the screen there, but it, it blows it up huge. Um, you know, so you're kind of, and hopefully I don't ever want to drive such that, that that thing is almost off the map anyways, because if it goes much further, I'm not going to see anything, right? So I kind of want this thing to kind of stay in my in my field of view here as I'm working. So I'm just going to do a simple um, if-then statement. So I'm going to do if, and my variable I created was called cogx, just cogx. Um, you can see it right here. I'll pull this across. If cog x is, let's say, less than, okay, so now I just got to look at this again. On this side, um, you know, maybe in the middle is, you know, 250 or something like that, going up near 500, 600, and going down to zero. So I, I'm just going to use a number here just to make it kind of interesting here. I'm saying if cog x equals 250, and I can change these later, um, then... So if the cog x is less than 250, I'm going to say left motor, I'll do left underscore motor, I think, equals 300. And right motor, underscore motor, equals 150. So that means I'm applying more power to the left motor. Um, so if I get less than 250, right, so I'm, I'm over here now, less than 250, I'm going to apply more power to the left motor so as I'm, I'm pushing this way, and I'll push this back into the middle here. And this is an easy thing to screw up because you're kind of you're tricking yourself, right? You're thinking this is going that way, but I need to turn the other way to, to correct for it. And you can always fix that later on. Um, if cog x is less than 250, then more power on the left, left power on the right. Um, else, and I'll just kind of tab myself here. Else if... Um, cog x, and I won't say greater than 250, I kind of want to spot where I'm going to drive straight, right? So I'm going to say if cog x is a greater than 350, we'll say, then um, left motor, we'll, we'll, go, we'll turn the opposite direction here, we'll say left motor um, equals 150, and right motor, underscore motor, equals 300. Um, so I've got this nice little else if statement here, this if else, if then else. So I get two statements. If I need to uh, more power on the left because I need to really turn to the right, I got more power on the right because I really need to turn to the left uh, to pull that thing back into the middle of my screen. And in the, in the best case scenario, um, what's going to happen is I'm going to do, uh, oh, so if then, that's right. And then a final statement is just going to be an else. Um, Else, I'm going to say left motor, left underscore motor uh, equals 200. Oop, and I didn't do an underscore. I did a little hyphen there instead, which I don't like. Uh, and then right motor, oops, go back up. Right motor equals 200. Right underscore motor equals 200. All right. And this would be the drive straight case, right? Um, but I'd have to be able to spell motor correctly, I think. Um, so else left motor equals. So if, if, if I'm in the middle, right, if I'm not less than 250 and I'm not greater than 350, drive straight. And it might also be a case where if I'm, you know, like at zero or something, I can't see the image, drive straight, and hopefully we'll reacquire the image at some point or something like that. And then we'll have a couple of, uh, we'll end if on, on this. Um, and we have to end if twice here. And then um, I'm going to set the variable. So I'm going to set a variable. Now setting a variable 
not only sets a value to it, but it actually creates the variable as well. So I'm going to create a variable that I'm going to call left motor. I'm the left underscore motor because that's what we were calling it up there, right? And I'll put a quote and then I'm going to set what was in left motor. So really I've created this variable now. I've written to it in those, um, in that algorithm above where I'm putting 150 in there or I'm putting 300 in there or putting whatever value in there I want to put in there. Um, and I'll do the same thing with the right motor as well. I'm just going to copy that chunk of code. And now instead of left motor, I'm going to type in right. Instead of left, I'm going to type in right again. All right. Um, so now what this should do, if, if, I, if I think this is working the way I expect it to, um, again, if I'm, uh, if I'm too far, uh, you know, too far to the left, I'll apply more power to the left. I'll pull that thing back to the, to the center of the screen. If I'm too far to the right, I'll apply more power to the right, uh, meaning that the, the image is actually further left in my field of view. Um, I'll apply more power to the right and pull that image back to the middle. And if it's right in the middle, I'll just drive straight. And so this should work pretty good. I'm going to reload and run. Um, and I can actually get a view here of what's going on here while I'm doing this. So you can see right now, for whatever reason, I'm getting some junk in here, right? But if I was right in the middle, so right about here, you can see my left motor and my right motor variables are at 200. If I go too far this way, see I get more power on my left motor and less power on my right motor. So I'm going to start turning to the right. And now I'm back in the middle at 200, 200. If I get too far this way, the same type of things happens. Now I'm going to get less power on my left, more power on the right, which is going to turn me back this way. It's going to bring that camera view back into the region of interest that I'm interested in. Um, so I reload and run. I'm good. I'm going to hit OK. Now you'll see this is very, very simple to set up. Now where it gets cool is if you have a robot running a, a standard Robotech motor controller, they actually have a Robotech plugin in here. I always forget where this is at now. Um, under, da, 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 da. let's see here. Hold on one second here. Loading, saving, interface, interface. Nope. Uh, oop, I bet you it's under control. And motors. There we go. And you'll see Robotech motor control. So I'm going to double click on Robotech motor control. Now what's neat about this is Robotech motor control can be set up in two different ways. Uh, it can be set up in... Uh, in two different modes. Um, separate mode, where I send one command for channel one, like a left motor, and one command for channel two, which is like a right motor. Or it can be set up in mixed mode, where I would send um, a steering command to channel one and a, a throttle command to channel two. Um, I think for this application, the easiest thing to do is going to be to set up your left motor on channel one and your right motor on channel two. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make sure that you actually, in the controller configuration, have it set up for separate motor control and not mixed mode motor control. Um, this is also the point where you could um, be communicating serially. You know, you could set up serial communications to the motor controller. Um, in my case, I'm, I don't have any serial communication set up, but I am going to hit OK, just make sure those values save. And what I really want to do is just kind of put that down here so I can kind of watch as I go into the middle of my image here. I'm going to kind of put it vertical so I'm a little bit easier to view here. You can see I'm at about 300 here. And you'll see my current commands. You can see the sliders down here too, right? I can see that I'm at 200 and 200 on my current commands. And if I go too far this way, you'll see I go 300 on the left motor and 150 on the right motor. And you see the sliders actually moved. And if I go back, I get back to 200, I'm back in the middle, drive straight. If I go too far this way, I get to 150 on the left and 300 on the right. And that will pull me back into the middle and I should be able to drive. And it shouldn't matter a whole lot as far as the distance of this, this green dot, you know, um, as far as, uh, you know, the achievability of this thing. The further away I am, I'm still tracking this green, um, you know, or the closer up I am. I'm still tracking this green, and really it is the center of gravity that I'm tracking that's determining those steering commands. Um, so that's that's the, the, the basics of uh, controlling a Robotech motor controller using the RoboRealm software. I'm really happy that we found this, and uh, we'll be using this to compete at the uh, Robotic Snowplow competition this year. If you want to check out more information on the Robotic Snowplow, you can visit autosnowplow.com. Thank you.